It's like weird how on the money this is. For a dude, for an Oibrov, it's like shocking that he knows this. All right, let's see. Los Angeles explained. Los Angeles, the land of big dreams, flourishing creativity, progressive policies, From tropical Geopo. beaches, and diverse culture, or a dystopian hellscape overflowing with uncontrollable criminals, rampant substance abuse, abominable infrastructure, abysmal city planning, and the most insufferable, fake, egotistical, hypocritical people on planet Earth. Well, to preface this video, I'm sure some of you live in LA, and I'm sure you're all nice people, okay? So especially for you guys, I thought I'd include a quick section, things Things I like about LA. Number one, a cheeseburger. Apparently it was invented in LA. As well as the egg muck muffin. Two, abundant muck. sunbathing opportunities. The weather's perfect. He said muck muffin. Perfect and you got beautiful bodies of water like the LA River and the shark infested riptide laden North Pacific Ocean. Or if you really want to get that tan going, Death Valley National Park. Number three, uh, Hassan's house. I like it because Hassan has Wow Mao locked in the basement editing TikToks, and I appreciate him getting rid of all my competition on this platform. Number four, <laughs> California. <laughs> Ah, uh, true. City. Now, not many people know about this suburban city in Los Angeles County, but personally, I really like the architecture of every single house they built here. And number five, all the good comedy, films, music, and art that's come out of Los Angeles over the years. After all, LA is the entertainment capital of America. I mean, the electric guitar was literally invented here. However, the problem with LA being the American entertainment capital is that realistically, it's just the place where art gets turned into commercial products that people like this guy can make billions off. This is perfectly portrayed by some of the local- This is such a British take on LA, it's hilarious. I mean, yeah. Demonic talk shows based out of LA. <laughs> James Corden has got to be the most American British person ever. And he possesses one of the most defining LA personality traits. He's too happy. Everyone in LA is too happy, blood. They all think their main characters are something. Shouting down their iPhone 15s with all their shiny white teeth glistening in the sun. I really think that if any of these delusionally happy LA freaks were forced to eat a soggy Tesco meal deal waiting at a freezing wet bus stop, sat next to a passed out cheese head in the outskirts of Birmingham, them, they would just revert back into being normal humans. Angelinos have got to be the most clout-minded people on the planet. You can get anything in LA if you got some clout. For example, Big Arnold was the state governor for eight years. Now, I think the guy was great in Terminator, but what the f*** does he know about governing a state? This is just a famous old man from Austria with a severely lower than average That's so crazy. That is tr That's fucking so true. God damn it. I... I hate to recognize this, and I hate to admit that this this Oibrov is right, but god damn, what the fuck? Brain capacity due to taking enough anabolic steroids to kill a dinosaur in the 70s. Really, Los Angeles is just a valley full of hopeful people trying to achieve their dreams, which sounds nice, but ends up as a pyramid of fragile egos in which each individual is desperately leeching off whoever is the next level up in a frantic thrashing competition to get from the deep sea to the twilight zone. And I think the peak of this LA main character syndrome is the internet niche where so-called influencers film themselves giving out money to homeless people on Skid Row, either to make profit or to make clout that leads to profit, or just purely to stroke their own egos. But like, oh congratulations bro, you just funded like 27 fent over d***ers, and people will- Dude, nothing, nothing touches California staying on fucking top, baby, other than this shit, okay? I'm sorry. There's nothing, dude. California on top, baby. Let me just fucking point to it real quick. That's right, dude. Xi Jinping at APEC meeting in San Francisco. All these fucking haters at CBSNews.com being like, it's a political minefield. You fucking kidding me, dude? Governor Gruesome Gavin Newsom, he did it. California up lost on top. That's right. He went out there. And he decked the fuck out of that Chinese child, okay? And guess what happened? The Chinese who respect strength said, guess what? You decked the fuck out of that kid, and we respect you for it. We're going to come and show. We're going to come and show 
to you the charitability that you showed to us as a Chinese ha said, this rendition of this great song is offensive to our people. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Kind of fucked up that you're saying that I'm not singing my heart out. Hell no, the great Khan Pritzker will destroy gruesome newsome and Illinois will rule the continent. There's three top blokes in the Democratic Party ranks. All three are governors. Okay? All three are governors. You have the, the Illinois Oblast gruesome... <laughs> Not gruesome. Big boy Pritzker. Okay. And then coming in from Michigan. Coming in from Michigan, they unite against Palestine. Excuse me. Uh, Big Gretch. Uh, hell no. Big Gretch is the most pro-Palestinian politician in the nation. Okay. Other than like Rashida Tlaib. The Illinois, the Illinois Khanate led by uh, Papa, led by Papa Pritzker and the, the buxom Big Gretch from Michigan versus California Oblast's very own gruesome governor, Gavin Newsom. Okay. These are the, these are the top three contenders. Anyway, this is pretty sick though. Biden, uh, and G APEC meeting in San Francisco, a political minefield. Huh? No one can afford San Francisco rents, not even Xi. They're trying to bankrupt China. All right, let's continue. We'll applaud this stuff in the comments, saying like, yo, politicians would never help these people out like you do. And I think the target audience for this type of content is like Republican dads. And I find it so <laughs> funny when patriotic Americans who love their financial individualism also wonder why their downtown is full of drug addicts and why the politicians they vote for don't do anything to help this crisis. <laughs> well, the system you are so proud of literally incentivizes doctors to prescribe people thousands of medications they don't need. The selling of of medicine in the US is literally a pyramid scheme. Just instead of getting Sigma males to sign up to Hustlers University, we're getting vulnerable Americans addicted to opioids, leading to drug <coughs> epidemics like what we see in downtown LA, specifically Skid Row. This area is pretty much a no-go zone, even though you can still find hipsters munching away on their avocado toast in these apartment blocks, looking out of their penthouse windows appreciating- It's like weird how on the money this is. Like, for a dude, for an oi bruv, it's like shocking that he knows this. In the gritty urban environment, hipsters have absolutely taken over the hoods of LA. I mean, there are literally coffee roasteries in fucking huh? Compton. Despite this being the situation on the streets, LA is one of the most expensive cities in America. We're talking Switzerland level prices. We're talking Monaco level prices. We're talking Iceland level prices, not the shop, the country. So to demonstrate how expensive LA really is, I opened up Zillow and set my location to Los Angeles. How much do you think this old crusty bungalow is going for? Pause the video right now and make your guess. Uh that old crusty bungalow, uh, at least 1.2. At least 1.2 mil. And 2.8 million dollars. No! What? What about this literal ba- Wait, that's my- That's literally the price of my house. What the fuck? Yo, what is happening in the fucking housing market, dog? What neighborhood? This old crusty bungalow is going for. Pause the video right now and make your guess. And- This is why it's so fucking funny that people were like, Three million dollar mansion? Uh, rich much? Uh, hypocrite much? And it's like- it kills me that every single motherfucker that has walked through, every single motherfucker that has walked through these halls here, okay, have been like, this is your house. And it pisses me off because it's like, it's nice. It's like a nice house. It's not like, a, it's a normal, it is a normal single family home. That's it. It is literally the most normal single family home you can own in this goddamn city. That's it. It's not like a crusty bungalow like this, probably bigger than that, but it, it's just like, I remember FD Signifier laughed about how your house was very normal, Lamau. Yeah. Mansion drama again. We get a bro. Normal single family home in LA. No, everybody knows that that is a very normal single family home. It's just funny that like I've gotten probably like it literally created the most like hatred. It, it kick started like the fuck Hassan train solidified after that. You know what I mean? That was like the first big wave. And it is hilarious. Everybody was like, dude, everybody's acting like I brought, I bought the fucking Taj Mahal or some shit. And it's just like literally a regular ass house. 
2.8 million dollars. What about this literal bando which was absolutely destroyed in a fire? If you look closely, there's no roof. Also, instead of a garden, the house backs onto a constantly congested, noisy, fume-emitting five-lane freeway. And across the street, there's what looks to be a rubbish dump. Take your guesses, folks. 400 grand for a f***ing yeah. bando. All right, finally, we got this one. It's got a pool and a fire pit, guys. So you already know we're talking big money. And whilst it's obviously nicer than all the others we've seen so far, it's still one story tall. Remember, this is just a glorified flashy bungalow. All right, pause the vid and make your guess now. 5.2, depending on where area it is, it's either 5.2 or it could go all the way to 10.2. Like, it's minimum 5.2 though. It's way too nice. The backyard is way too nice. So... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say 8.5. You are wrong. It was oh. none of these options on the screen because this house is currently on sale for $85 million. Maybe after seeing these ludicrous property prices, you get a better idea why so many people live in tents. Out of the American homeless population, 40% are employed and work jobs. They literally just can't afford housing. But to really get your empathy going, you can watch me doing a homeless challenge for 48 hours in LA whilst I get thousands of dollars in ad revenue to fund my cool Venice Beach artsy hippie house where me and my politically correct friends make thought-provoking content. Skid Row <laughs> is only one of the many neglected and unsanitary parts of Los Angeles. Another example is the LA River. Once a picturesque crystal clear gold rich waterway now is one of the most polluted flowing bodies of water in the world. Basically the snowmelt and rainwater from up here just passes through the city sucking up so much industrial and urban waste that it consistently reaches a hundred times more eco- This video has taught me that you're a fake social because your house is normal and actually small. Get your money up and we'll buy a real mansion shaking my head. Yeah, it is, it is nutty. Uh, it's also crazy that this 13 minute video is actually from some fucking boy bruv zoomer. Unironically has, has, uh, as incredibly solid analysis uh, baked into it. Coli than the federal guidelines allow. And it finishes by dumping potentially lethal bacteria, lead, mercury, chromium, dioxin, and many, many more dangerous substances right into the San Pedro Bay, a popular swimming spot for tourists and Los Angeleans alike. But there's another massive water-based problem in LA, uh, lawns. That's right, look at all these lush green American lawns in the middle of what should be the desert. Yeah, Californians are so proud of their stupid yeah i'm a psycho and found that 85 million dollar house is like 10k square feet in beverly hills with a crazy view on a huge lot yeah it's probably the lot that like yeah that house literally the 85 million dollar house is all location baby is all location and it has a tennis court and shit that's why it's actually pretty it's sprawling like it's it's, it's a compound it's not a bungalow he he definitely sold it he under undersold it lawns that they're willing to risk hefty fines poisoning their entire garden using paint or more importantly potentially causing devastating environmental disasters this is because la is naturally super super dry they get all their water funneled down from northern california this really messes up the natural geography of california it's 21, since the ground square in the north feet, doesn't 10. get as much water as it naturally should because it's all funneled south and in the south crops and plants are grown where they're not naturally meant to exist essentially the north Northern plants dry up enough to become fuel for fire, and the southern ground acquires plants which act as fuel for fire. That paired with the recent dry winters and record-breaking hot summers inevitably provides the perfect circumstances for record-level wildfires. I don't know, I guess you guys must just love those annual XL bonfires you've been hosting for the last few years. And whilst the cause of these fires might seem very obvious and simple to you and me, some Americans have taken to blaming wildfires fires on for example ufos who've somehow used lasers to set all of california on fire i do actually think this map of ufo sightings explains all you need to know about the type of people that live in los angeles but can you really blame them when they have some of the worst public schools in the country uh edit it turns out the private schools are just as bad crazy and awful and obviously kids being unable to access an acceptable level of education has a clear correlation with homelessness but no 
I don't want to use my damn money to fund no damn public sector. But I also don't understand why people are so damn stupid and can't get jobs nowadays and have to live in homeless camps. God dang it. Regarding schools though, I don't even know how kids are supposed to get there in LA. I don't know about you guys, but when I was young, me and 95% of my classmates walked to school or got the bus. Can you guess what percentage of LA commuters walk? 2%! Bro, no wonder you guys have that problem everyone makes fun of you for. And I find it hilarious that 53% of Californians say they care deeply about their carbon footprint. Like yeah, except, you know, again, the fucking city is not designed to walk around in. It's so funny because it's quite literally designed for cars. And it used to be a city that was perfectly walkable and had a robust public transit structure it's so fucking crazy like la isn't even in the top 70 highest populated cities but has the fifth highest carbon emissions in the world i've also found that californians like to brag about their state having the highest vegan population in america as if that's some kind of beneficial thing for the environment when the state's avocado and almond farms require 2.1 billion bees to be flown in from around the world annually 30 percent of which die excuses Motherfucker, how? <laughs> what do you mean excuses? You think I like this shit? You think I want it to be like this? Are you crazy? You think Californians even want it to be like this? You know, they don't. Let me tell you, they do not. I in the process. Plus these farms use around 28 billion gallons of water a day, which is literally cannonballing the state into ecological collapse in the form of hellfire. I mean, I've got to give it to them. It really is quite the feat to not even have a population of 4 million and still rank top five for carbon emissions. I wonder how this is even- huh. You get the government you vote for? Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, that's- Yeah, we're the most democratic country on the planet. That's why, like, for example, if you were to uh, say, hey, I don't want to vote for a guy who's going to, like, push a genocide in Palestine. Your options are guy who's currently pushing for ethnic cleansing in Palestine versus guy who accelerated the conditions so that an ethnic cleansing of Palestinians would occur now rather than 10 years later uh and then if he wins again he will even accelerate it further it's great like you have the option between who's going to kill fast and who's going to kill even faster most people here are planning on moving to la or doing it for social media are the parties and social networking worth the shithole you're talking to someone who spends every waking moment live in his own house in his own fucking living room that he's converted into a studio and then goes to sleep immediately after he's done so no I do not live here for the parties and the networking. Uh, I live here mostly because of the weather, even though I don't even go outside. But yeah. Possible. Oh, I get it. Los Angeles specifically is one of the worst controlled urban sprawls on this planet with its 26 lane highways and absolute lack of functional public transport. And I know all the America cells are right now commenting how cars are so much quicker and efficient. So explain this. It literally takes three hours to drive from one side of LA to the other with traffic jams consistently lasting hours long. Really quick and efficient, huh? It turns out building an extra 20 lanes on highways to fix traffic is like printing more money to fix inflation. You'd only think it's a good idea if you went to Los Angeles public school. In 2008, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger uh uh, anyway, he promised to develop a high-speed rail link from LA to San Francisco, two major West Coast metro areas which would benefit massively from high-speed rail since your current options to travel from one to the other are 1. Die of boredom festering away in a car for 6 hours Option 2. 9 hours on the Greyhound bus which will probably switch drivers like 8 times leading to around 12 hours of waiting around On this mystical journey you can expect to smell a relaxing fragrance of in and out cheese Cheeseburger farts oh being God. recirculated oh. through the bus via the AC. Or option three, uh, you could fly. American airports were originally designed to be very efficient and smooth to pass through. But ever since, y you know, they've been a bit, uh, let's say, paranoid. Which means LAX <laughs> and SFO aren't really designed to accommodate stricter security checks than if you were entering the White House. So we can all add, as recommended, two hours and 59 minutes to the flight time. Oh, unless you're an Arab male that has a 
beard. You are going to be intensely interrogated by terrified airport staff for over six hours. And then we have the proposed high speed line, two and a half hours. It blows all other options out of the water. This is such an obviously good idea with so much potential to make money. I really hope no one messes this all up. 15 years later, the line has already costed 128 billion fucking dollars. They are currently planning to open stage one in the 2030s with Neva Los Angeles or San Francisco as part of it. Oh, that's right. They did the middle bit first, apparently so the government can gauge the profit margins and public reception and then hopefully fund the rest. Uh, the only problem is that the whole of this middle bit looks a bit like that's right, instead of addressing any of the issues in our state, like public education or homelessness, that Geopold has already addressed in this. Well, also Elon Musk, like he, and also every contractor that the American government works with has to be an absolute bloodless psychopath who is almost exclusively in it to just like gouge the government coffers as aggressively as they possibly can with no real interest in like actually building anything. Elon Musk is one of the many different examples. Elon Musk was directly against the project and took funds away from the project, but also the other ones that are supposedly working on the project are also bad. Very, it's just awful. Oh God, I hate this fucking country so much. It's just like, we need a tyrant. We need a Xi Jinping, we do. We need like, we need to centralize control in the hands of, of uh, somebody who's just gonna get the fucking job done. And then every single person that like, will benefit from it later will be like oh shit how did this happen i am a firm believer in uh being not a benevolent dictator by the way i'm a firm believer in just doing shit without telling the public that you're doing that shit until later and they can recognize it you know a couple of years down the line when they're like what happened to all the homeless people not a benevolent dictator at all it's just like the way i see it if you're being voted on and, and you're, you know, running on specific ideas, okay? There is no reason to just, like, tell anybody else once you got voted on, okay? It's like, this is why I was voted. I was voted to do these things, and people expect these things from me. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do, no matter what happens, I'm going to do those things. Of course, obviously, that goes against living under capitalist rule. Like Mussolini, who made the tr trains run on time? Yeah, that's what I meant. Good own, man. Yeah. That's what I meant. I love that the only guy you can think of that, that is an advocate for public transit is Mussolini. This video, we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars connecting the two booming, well-known, iconic... I'm guessing you wanted to get the homeless people a home and not the other thing that it sounded like? Yeah, of course. I mean, like, building public housing, which there have been, like... Building public housing, which there has been, like, 15 ballot initiatives... 15 ballot measures that have been democratically voted on so far over the course of at least my life uh, uh, living in Los Angeles. Just do it. Don't fucking have any public hearings on it. Just fucking do it. Shut up. California cities, Mersand and Bakersfield. <laughs> I do find it funny how some of the Americans I've been referencing in this video would collapse out of sheer mental pain if they had to pay a dollar of their money to the government to be used to provide essential education or essential healthcare or essential <laughs> shelter. And these same guys don't even know the government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars building a train that connects cities like fucking Madura and Mersend and Tule. And I thought nothing could top HS2 in terms of overspending. And at this at this point, you might be completely in despair, wondering what on earth can we do to fix all these problems? Well, my solution is we should just give this land back to Mexico. If there's anything these Angelinos need to burst their delusional, optimistic, smiley, happy bubbles, it's spicier food, high speed trains, and more narco violence. Agreed. I agree with that. I think that's a, that's a fire way to go about it. Anyway. The idiot chatter about Mussolini mixed up Italy with Germany law. No, it's a common meme for both Mussolini and Germany as well. But from what I understand, like, even in Mussolini land, it, it didn't work the way that people claim it did. Anyway. Yeah, I don't think it's even true.